Yo, what is going on everybody? It's Juan Solo here with A-Squad Gaming and welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for tuning in today for some more Modern Warfare. So in today's video, we're going to be going in-depth with some of these settings that you're going to want to run while playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare because these things have changed a little bit from previous Call of Duty titles. And since the game has been out for a week now, I have been tinkering with my settings, just trying different things out. And I'm going to be going over it today what I feel as if the best settings are in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So real quick before we jump into that, if you guys go on to enjoy the video you find it helpful make sure to drop a like on the video as well as subscribe if you are new to stay up to date on the latest information surrounding call of duty modern warfare on the channel moving forward over 70 percent of you that are actually watching my videos right now are not currently subscribed to the channel so if you are enjoying the content make sure to subscribe and turn on those post notifications so you do not miss any future uploads so the first setting that we're going to be talking about in today's video is the aim response curve type so i've seen a lot of people talking about this and being slightly confused on exactly what this is and this is mainly going to be for your right joystick. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is going to be for console players. And you have three choices to pick from in this setting. You have standard, linear, and dynamic. And by default, this is set to standard. And the only comparison that I could kind of come up with is if you wanted to keep it on standard, it makes it feel more like Battlefield because it felt like the sensitivity of your aim slowly sped up as you push the joystick in a certain direction. And my first few games on Modern Warfare felt very clunky. And I think this is kind of what had something to do with that. And next we have linear. So this is going to be sort of like your standard Call of Duty feel when it comes to your response curve type on your analog stick. And this basically means the farther you push your stick, the faster it's going to move based on your input sensitivity. And last but not least, we have dynamic. And this is the one that I would strongly recommend to run. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but when it comes to the actual aiming with your joystick, it is the most snappy, but it is also the easiest to aim with, at least in my personal opinion. So if you have not had a chance to try out dynamic, I would strongly recommend it. Next, we're going to be talking about the aim assist. So there are four options here we have disabled standard precision and focusing obviously I would strongly recommend not to use disabled because you will be putting yourself at a huge disadvantage standard is more of your traditional call of duty feel when it comes to the aim assist and this is actually the one that I use personally moving on to precision this is going to be for your more accurate players that are going to normally be on center mass target most of the time it's going to keep your aim more centered on an enemy but you have to land that shot there first it's not going to help you pull your crosshair if you are aiming near an enemy similar to to standard and focusing and with that being said focusing is definitely for more of the new players in call of duty it does have a little bit of a stronger aim assist but most of you that have actually played previous call of duties might think that it's a little bit too strong and it might mess up your aim especially when you're engaging multiple targets so i would strongly recommend just to use standard if you have played call of duty a quite a few times if you are brand new to the franchise i would suggest focusing but even if you are an accurate player precision really doesn't seem like it's the best way to go you would almost be better off going standard. Also, when it comes to sensitivity, this is going to be very player specific. So everybody's sensitivity is going to be a little bit different, but I would strongly recommend that you take advantage of the ADS sensitivity multiplier because up until Black Ops 4, this was not an option. And then halfway through Black Ops 4's life cycle, they instituted something that you can actually slow down your sensitivity speed when it came to ADSing your weapon. And for me personally, I run eight sensitivity on my horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity, but I run a 0.8 when it comes to the sensitivity of when I'm actually zoomed in with my weapon and this helps to be a little bit more precise when it comes to the ADS and in Call of Duty Black Ops 4 they actually went by fractions but in Modern Warfare they have a decimal so you can really customize it when it comes to your sensitivity multiplier and I would definitely recommend going in and testing this out and kind of see what fits for you it will definitely help when it comes to aiming in your weapons and now moving along from the controller settings over to the video settings I'm going to give you guys a few that you need to run because it's going to put you at a disadvantage if you are not running these first off you're going to want to make sure that your film grain is is at zero because there is no real reason to run it any higher than that. I'm not exactly sure why this is an actual setting in the game because if you have it any higher than zero, it's just going to pixelate your screen with noise and it's going to make it harder to see individual objects and players at distance. Also, I would strongly recommend to make sure that your world motion blur as well as your weapon motion blur are both disabled, especially for those of you out there that might get motion sick while you are playing. This is something that you're going to want to turn off immediately. But for those of you that do not get motion sick, I find it to be easier to see things especially when it comes to the world motion blur it makes it so that everything is going to be super crisp and it's going to allow you to pick out enemies a lot easier when you are moving around the map and now last but not least this is a setting that i personally use so i use one of the colorblind types which is the tritonopia but do take note i am not colorblind in any way shape or form but what i found to be with it comes to the colors of this game that tritonopia makes the colors a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more crisp from the base version of the color palette but for those of you out there that 
might have an issue with some of the colors in the game, I would strongly recommend that you test this, but make sure that it doesn't mess with your eyes by doing this. But for those of you guys out there that may not have any issues with any colorblind settings, I would strongly recommend going over to this because it just makes the colors a little bit more vibrant and they pop more and it's a little bit more crisp. But overall, that's pretty much going to do it for the video. I just wanted to run you guys down through some of these settings that I am using currently in Modern Warfare to kind of give you guys an edge. Make sure that you're checking out these settings because depending on how you have it set up, it might be actually putting you at a disadvantage. But also let me know down in the comment section if these settings were similar to what you guys were running or what you guys are running in the game itself because I would love to know what you guys are running with your settings. But like I said, that's all for the video. If you guys enjoyed it, you guys found it helpful, make sure to drop a like on the video and also subscribe if you are new to stay up to date on the latest information surrounding Call of Duty Modern Warfare as well as Ghost Recon Breakpoint on the channel moving forward. But that is all for now. Thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you guys later. Peace out.